In this video, we will talk about optocouplers. The component that you are seeing here, which I have in my hand, are quite universal optocouplers, so to speak, they can be used for almost anything. They are PC817S. How is it formed inside? It is very easy to understand. We are going to diagram and draw it right now. This component, as its name itself says, is an optical coupler. What does it mean? That it produces an optical coupling, that is, there is light inside it. This is our component. When we energize this diode, which this diode is an LED, I don't know if you knew, but LEDs, LED lights, in reality are diodes, only that in their internal excitation, instead of only blocking the passage of electrons, which they do, they also produce light there. When we excite this diode, we inject a voltage of approximately 1.5 to 3 volts. At this moment this LED turns on, emits light, and from this side where we have a photosensitive circuit, it then activates and lets the electrons pass. I turn on this light and from this side it lets the electrons pass. Why do we have this component so complex, so to speak, to carry out this notice from one side to the other? Think about the following. In this area of the board, we are already almost in contact with the control area with the microprocessor, delicate areas, and on this side of the board, we are talking about that we have high voltages. These voltages, which are affected by the electric company if it has any problems, can damage a microprocessor. So, to warn from one side to the other how much is being consumed and how much the pulse width has to vary, an optocoupler is used precisely. This component allows that by means of a light it is informed from one side to the other, not being able to affect electrically what happens, neither from one side nor from the other. Precisely, this component has an internal barrier, that is, it has an internal dielectric, an insulation against electricity, a galvanic insulation of 5,000 volts. What does it mean? If for some reason 5,000 volts are injected from this side, nothing happens absolutely, and from this side the same, they communicate only through a light. This component is very interesting because we will find it several times in inverter technology, at least they will have six on all the boards. Excuse me, you will find five, or rather six in some depending on the type of fan you have. We will see it in practice and learn how to test this component. We will zoom in and illuminate. On the side where it has the point, we always have the LED that illuminates. And where the point is we have the positive side of the LED, the positive side. Let's test with the multimeter to see if it is in good condition or not. We will place the multimeter in LED position and measure. Open line. Perfect. And if we invert, we will have the voltage drop of the LED. The voltage drop of the LED is 1.05 volts. LED diodes have a voltage drop of a little more than 1 volt, generally, so this LED is perfect. On the other side, we would have open line, because now the LED is off. There is no continuity here. This is perfect. What would happen if we turn on that LED? We will test it with the necessary elements. 
we will use some special test leads. These test leads that we will be recommending can be purchased and in the class that we talk about tools I will explain a little more. There we have the part of the optocoupler that has to be bridged when the LED is turned on. We will connect this to the multimeter now. There we are. Now we are going to turn on that LED. How are we going to turn it on? We will do it with a small button cell. In this case, I have the CR2032 model. Remember that these batteries on the wider side have their symbol or plus sign well marked. This is the positive. Notice that if we put in continuity, what will appear on the screen? There we have 20 ohms, and there it falls to zero. When the internal LED is turned on, continuity is produced on the other side. It is not a zero to zero continuity because in reality it is a photo receiving circuit. It is not a direct bridge or a contact. That is why it always has some resistance, but it is very low, only 20 ohms. In this case, this optocoupler is working perfectly. If you want to see how it is made inside, I will show you one disassembled. This is how they are made inside. On one side it has the LED. And on the other side, the photo receiving circuit. This is how they communicate internally and can be turned on as we are seeing now. This is the dielectric material, the insulating material. If we energize it, we will see how the light turns on. But in this case, it will be difficult because with the camera that we are making these recordings, it is a slightly more advanced camera and does not see infrared lights. But with any cell phone, perhaps Samsung or Xiaomi brand, you could see this light, just like you see the light of a remote control, just like that, they are infrared lights.